Job chapter number 3. If you're a student of the Bible, you know what has befallen Job. You know that he lost his family, went to ten funerals in one day. You know that he lost his flocks, he lost his finances, his flesh is uh, rotting off the bone. Um, we all suffer. But no one has suffered like Job suffered. All of that has happened, and Job did not charge God foolishly. He did not sin in his heart. But I want to pick up in chapter number 3, toward the end of the chapter, Job's mindset. The Bible says in verse 23, Why is light given to a man whose way is hid? And whom God hath hedged in. For my sign cometh before I eat, and my roarings are poured out like the waters. For the thing which I greatly feared is come upon me, and that which I was afraid of is come unto me. I was not in safety, neither had I rest, neither was I quiet, yet trouble came. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for the good singing. Thank you for being a good God. Lord, thank you, Father, for the good testimonies, the good reports. God, how you are blessing your people. God, we are a blessed people. We live in a blessed land. Lord, I certainly don't appreciate everything America stands for and everything that's going on in America, but I am glad and so thankful we have the freedom to be able to come and worship tonight. Lord, there are some who would take that away from us. But God, we are glad to be able to come worship you in spirit and in truth. Thank you for this good number. It's good to see our dear folks. Lord, thank you for the love we have one for another. And thank you for being a good God. Now help us tonight, Lord. Oh, Lord, we uh, all can wear that facade that everything's okay, but there are days when everything is not okay. So I pray that you would help us tonight for that one that's on the mountaintop helping to store this up for when they're in the valley. And for that one that's in the valley, I pray you would strengthen them, help them to see you high and lifted up in their life, and God do something grand for them. Help us tonight, Lord. We love you. Thank you for first loving us. For it's in Jesus' wonderful name we ask these things. Amen and amen. I want you to notice first... A few things about Job. First of all, notice Job's question in verse 23. He said, Why is light given to a man whose way is hid, and whom God hath hedged in? Now, can I say, first of all, uh, God hedging us in is not a bad thing. Uh, Solomon wrote in Ecclesiastes chapter number 10 that whosoever breaketh a hedge, the serpent biteth. And I'm certainly thankful to be hedged in to the protection and safety of God. I'm thankful to be a part of the family of God. And I'm thankful for all the privileges afforded us uh, in being able to hide under the shadow of his wings, uh, under the shadow of our great rock. Uh, But Job is not referring to that kind of hedge. Uh, He is referring to a hedge of trouble where you just can't seem to escape. He said, why is light given to him? whose path is hid, he says, uh, 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 and to whom God hath hedged in. Lamentations 3 says this in verse 7, He hath hedged me about that I cannot get out. He hath made my chain heavy. Verse 8, also when I cry and shout, he shutteth out my prayer. That is what Job is referring to. There is no way of escape for what he is facing. Have you ever just been overwhelmed and you think there's no way out of this? That's where Job's at. We see his question. Notice his qualm in verse 24. He says, For my sign cometh before I eat, and my roarings are poured out like the waters. Can I say his qualm is is that every emotion that he would not want to be facing, he is facing before he eats throughout the day. He is just an absolute Wreck. His qualm is that he is filled with doubt and uncertainty. Have you ever been there? Did you ever wonder if God really cared? 
Do you ever wonder why everything is befalling you when you're trying to do your best to live godly and do right? Job is there. My dear friends, you live long enough, you'll be there too. We see his question, we see his qualm. Notice his quandary in verse number 26. He said, I was not in safety, neither had I rest, neither was I quiet, yet trouble came. Job is saying, I wasn't idle, I wasn't complacent, I hadn't just sat back and rested on my laurels, uh, I wasn't quiet, I wasn't just going through the motions. Uh, he said, I was active, I was doing everything I was supposed to do. If we went back to chapter 1, you'd find he even offered up sacrifices for his children in case they had forgotten to. And he did that daily. Can I say, you can be doing everything right, living right, being right, and still trouble comes. Now, I know the super-duper, heavy, uh, independent, fundamental Baptists walk right, spit right, talk right. They, they talk like you should never have any problems. And I know uh, uh, the Holy Roller, the supernatural uh, Benny Hinn crowd says that uh, if you've got problems because you don't have the faith. Job is right with God, but everything that could did come against him. Now, notice his quote in verse 25. He says, for the thing which I greatly feared is come upon me, and that which I was afraid of is come unto me. Now, I don't care who you are. You might as well adjust your halo right now. There are things that you fear. You may have a fear for your grandchildren or your children. You may have a fear for your livelihood or your job, your plan about ready to close. You may have a fear for your health. It's amazing. As I'm approaching 60, how much you think about your health when 30 years ago you didn't care. It's amazing uh, the things that run through your mind and things that trouble you. Job said that thing which he had feared greatly had come upon him. Hmm? I don't know what you fear. And if you say you have no fear, you're a liar. There's something that you dread and hope never comes against you. Job said it did. And I want to preach or teach whatever I'm doing tonight because I don't have much throat. But I want to give you this thought. When fear camps at your doorstep, Can I say, if you're afraid, that doesn't make you a weak Christian. If you have fear, that doesn't make you a second-class Christian. That makes you human. What you need to recognize when fear comes is you have a source that even Job didn't have. You have the darling Son of God. You have the Holy Spirit of God living in you, and you can go to them, and they can help you and comfort you in your fear. Uh, the beauty of having the Scriptures is we learn how to handle these things when they come into our life. Unfortunately, many Christians, uh, when they need the Scriptures the most, tend to shun them or forget about them. So what do you do when fear camps at your doorstep? Can I say, first of all, when fear begins to take hold or grip your heart or your life, the first thing is don't panic. Most people panic when trouble comes. I'm guilty. Huh? I mean, something happened to one of the kids, and that's calm and cool as a cucumber. Me, I'm freaking out, you know. Me and blood don't get along real good. Huh? When fear begins to grip your heart, don't panic. Don't panic. When you get news, your plant's closing. Don't panic. David said he'd never seen the righteous forsaken nor seed begging bread. Can I help you with something? God knows how to take care of his people. And I shudder to think that uh, we're going to lose the White House here in a couple months. But can I say this? Even if we do, it's going to be okay. 
or we may have to face some very, very difficult times, and we may have to put up with things that our flesh hates. But we got through eight years of Obama. It'll be all right. Huh? It'll be okay. God knows how to take care of his people. Now, there are things we like and things we enjoy, and we don't like it when it goes the other way. I can't believe Bevan didn't win last year, and we are paying for it. Hmm? But again, if Christians would have voted Christ-like, Bevan would be in office. Hmm? The same problem Bevan has, the same problem Trump has. doesn't have the best personality. That's why they're running all these people out that you never heard of that Trump has helped. So you can see that side of him. So you don't hear the brashness. But I'm here to tell you there are things that will come into your life. Don't panic. I heard a preacher say this, and when he said it, I really didn't like it. But it's right. He said, I'd rather have Biden as president president and true revival break out than have Trump and we just stay the status quo I didn't like it when he said it I didn't aim any but the more I thought about that what's most important revival hmm? when trouble comes don't panic when fear begins to grasp you and you know it you start feeling anxious don't panic. The Bible says in Philippians 4, verse 6, Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your, your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. 2 Timothy 1, 7, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So if you have the spirit of fear, you know it didn't come from God. You know it's either your own flesh or it's the sorry devil. But God tells us when fear begins to well up in us to be careful for nothing but let our supplications with thanksgiving and our requests be made known unto God. Uh, don't panic. Trouble's coming. Don't panic. Yea, those that live godly shall suffer persecution. I hope that your greatest fear never camps at your doorstep. But if you find it at your doorstep, don't panic. Can I say secondly, take time to pray. Isn't that what Paul told the Philippians? Psalms 34, 4 says, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Hmm? Did he say that he delivered me out of this situation? No. But he delivered me from all my fears. And as long as you've got peace and hope, really, what else matters? Hmm? When fear begins to take hold, don't panic. Take time to pray. One writer by the name of Jerry Bridges said this, the great antidote to anxiety is to come to God in prayer. We are to pray about everything. Nothing is too big for him to handle, and nothing is too small to escape his attention. You know why you have problems when fear comes and you get all messed up? You don't pray. You don't talk to God about it. If it concerns you, it concerns God. And can I help you with something? He's able to handle it. He's got the answer for it. And he's got peace to deliver you from all your fears. Can I say, when fear camps at your doorstep, feel fear welling up. Be poised with hope. Isaiah said in Isaiah 12, 2, Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid for the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song he also has become my salvation be poised with hope realize whose you are get your song and begin singing praise unto God trust and hope in the one who is delivered if he can save you from sin he can save you from your fear can 
Can I say this? When you feel like fear is taking over, cling to a promise. Find you a promise. You don't need all 30,000 of them. Find you one and hold on to it. Write it down. Memorize it. Take it with you everywhere you go. Cling to a promise. Listen, when you're fearful and you approach God through prayer, God will show you something in his word. Say, God, show me something. I need a promise. Give me some help. Cling to a promise. Isaiah, six, uh, uh, Isaiah 41, 10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. What a promise. Huh? Uh, that's one to cling to. Isaiah 41, 10. Huh? Fear not, I'm with thee. Be not dismayed, for I'm thy God. I will strengthen thee, I will help thee, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. That promise will help you when fear sits in on you. Cling to a promise. Can I say this? When you feel like fear's at your doorstep and you feel like you can't get over it, I alluded to it to a minute ago, just start praising the Lord. Just start praising Him. Miss Annette sings that song, You Can Praise the Pain Away. Hmm? Isaiah 61 3. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. You bring glory to God when you start praising him when you have no reason to praise him. When your world's turned upside down and you can still well up and muster up from something deep down in the gable end of your soul where you cry, it is well with my soul. And you begin to praise God. God gets glory from it. And all the scoffers around you see that what you have is real. It's easy to praise Him on the mountaintop. It's easy to praise Him when everything's going good. But when you can praise Him in the midst of your fear and anxiety... It shows what you have will sustain you and take you all the way to heaven. I always worry about folks that uh, they're fair-weathered Christian, everything good, they love God. Trouble comes, bloodhounds can't find them. Hmm? Learn to start praising the Lord. Praise Him on the mountain, praise Him in the valley, praise Him all the time because He's worthy of it. And your life will be so much better if you learn the secret to having a happy life. It's called praising the Lord. He inhabits the praise of his people. That means he comes and sits down next to you when you start praising him. You know what will cause your fear to leave? When God shows up. Then I thought about this lastly. When fear begins to well up, please Christ by reciprocating love toward him. When fear comes, just start telling Jesus how much you love him. That pleases him. First John four eighteen, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. You know what will cause your fear to leave? Just fall in love with Jesus and start telling him. You start telling Jesus how much you love him, fear is going to leave. Just what more perfect love is there than a love for one who has been saved for the Savior? The only thing that even comes close to it is the love of a mother for a child. And can I say, when you truly just start telling Jesus how much you love him, that grip and torment of fear leaves, it dissipates, because perfect love casteth out all fear. And if you truly love him right, fear won't have a right to stick around you. So I wonder tonight, fear at your doorstep? There's a way to overcome it. Throughout the book of Job, God never spoke to Job. He never told Job, hey, here's a heads up, Job. 
I've turned you over to Satan. Don't worry about it. He can take everything but your life. Job never got that message. Even Peter, the Lord told Peter, Satan hath desired thee to sift thee as wheat. Even Peter got a warning. Job didn't. In the midst of all that Job faced, God didn't nestle up close to him and say, it'll be all right, Job. Just hang in there. He never got that. He didn't get anything to at the end when God answered him. And then Job felt about this tall that even questioned God. Hmm? Who are we to question God? Job had no assurance. But we do. We have God's promises. We have God's presence through the Spirit of the Holy Ghost living in us. And we have, my dear friends, the promise of His coming. But that doesn't diminish the fact that we have fears. But aren't you glad he has given us the tools to overcome our fear? Let fear subside and let the Savior take control. Now I know when it hits your doorstep, the first reaction is you want to panic. Don't panic. The first reaction is you need to get somebody else's attention. No, get God's attention. Hmm? Next time, instead of calling me first, why don't you call on him first? Uh, instead of getting mad at God, start praising God. Instead of getting bitter on God, start telling him how much you love him. And you're going to find that that fear can't stick around. And not only... Will the fear not stick around? You'll find, even though he may not deliver you out of the situation, he'll get so real in your situation, your situation becomes no situation. Because when you're hanging out with Jesus, nothing else really matters. So I wonder, when's the last time you hung out with him? Hmm? How's your stress level tonight? Listen, we just come from down south. There are folks down there still jacked up, scared to death over this virus. Just scared to death. Dr. Phil got in trouble. We went to a general store down there in Greenville, and we was just minding our own business. Phil's buying some candy. They got the old-fashioned hard candies and all, all this stuff we had as kids. Well, he's over there having a the time. I thought he was going to start growing hair. I mean, he was having a time over there. And some liberal come walking by. Said, I can't believe so many people are so inconsiderate and won't wear a mask. Well, without hesitating. He popped up, got his head out of the candy dish, and pops up and says, Hey, go tell somebody who cares. And went back to the candy. <laughs> Kelly thought we was all going to get shot. <laughs> it's funny, man. I laughed. It's funny. Huh? I mean, he didn't even think about it. It just, boom, there it was. I'm thinking, hallelujah. That's my church member right there, bless God. <laughs> there are people afraid. There are people having panic attacks already over this election. Especially if you're on the Democratic side. I mean, think about it. There's only one reason why Donald Trump wants the job. He loves America. <laughs> I mean, he donates his paycheck. He's not doing it because he loves getting skewed every day and being lied on every day and all that. He loves America. That's the only reason he ran. And the crowd that hates him, they're fearful he's going to get four more years. There's a crowd that hates you and I. They've tried everything they could to shut down churches, and they still are in California. Some of them are winning some court cases out there. I mean, they said, can't sing in church. 
bunch of morons. Huh? I'm just telling you. But there are people that are afraid. I don't know about you. But all, all it takes is one bad decision, and all of a sudden there's going to be riots in Florence, Kentucky. I mean, I never even heard that place where up there in Wisconsin where they're having riots. Terrible. And can I help you something? We got a liberal governor. He'll let them riot. I'm telling you, there are people afraid. They're fearful. They have the answer. His name is Jesus. There are people that are fearful in their own homes. The answer is Jesus. People fearful on the job. People fearful on the highway. People fearful of over. Okay. The answer is Jesus. Amen. Do you know him tonight? If you do, how often do you use him as the great resource against your fear? Tonight. Fear may camp at your doorstep. I highly recommend you camp at his feet. And fear will dissipate. Let's all stand tonight. Maybe you need to come and pray. Maybe God's delivered you from some fear. Maybe you need to come and thank him. Maybe you're faced with something. Maybe you need to come talk to him about it. If you enjoyed today's Maybe message, head on over to ibcforums.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening. Come get your guitar, pick something out. We'll have a song of invitation. Folks are coming. Uh, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we bless you. We thank you that you are greater than all our fears. You're the master of the sea. You're the one that, Lord, is not controlled by space or elements. God, I'm glad you're all-powerful tonight. And, Lord, I'm glad that we can plug into you and your power and rise above our fears. Now, Lord, I pray for your people tonight. Some may be faced with dire things. Help them. God, sustain them. Strengthen them. Encourage them in their fear. God, maybe some have been delivered and they just need to come and thank you for it. Maybe some tonight, Lord, uh, uh, just need to praise you for a little bit. Whatever the desire or whatever the need is in somebody's heart, I pray you take control now and that you'd receive honor and glory. And Father, we'll bless you for it. For it's in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus we do pray. Amen. Amen. If you enjoyed today's broadcast, head on over to your app store and download the IBC Florence app today, where we have our music, sermons, videos, devotions, and much more. And as always, thanks for listening.